Hey guys and welcome to another Q&A Monday video. As I said on the last video, I got so many questions on Facebook and Twitter from you guys that I'm still kind of working through the backlog. So if I don't get to your question today, please don't panic. I might get to it in a later video. If not, just drop your question down in the comments and I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. So without further ado, let's jump into the first question. Anna Heard asks, do you only see, hear and feel entities in your own home or do you notice them elsewhere as well? I don't think it's exclusive to my house. I do think I have felt things elsewhere, but a lot of that is down to the fact that this is a well-known haunted location. So for example, last year, uh, we visited Bodmin Jail in Cornwall, and that's it's quite a well-known location. Like it's it's known to be haunted. It housed a lot of prisoners, obviously a lot of negative energy, and I think you can kind of you can kind of sense that as you're walking around. Something feels eerie, like you're being watched and stuff. Now it wasn't at night. I didn't do an investigation, but something about it just felt like uneasy. Like you you couldn't you could sense that there was something around. And I think as far as it goes, that that's kind of it. I've not felt the same sort of static -y kind of electrical vibe that you get when when in the presence of a spirit anywhere else as of yet but i am looking to do more external investigations in the future so hopefully i'll experience more of that dale who asks i'd love to know what your first experience was where you simply couldn't rationalize it and you had to stop and say nope there's a ghost here for me i think that would be the instance with the chair in part one where I, I didn't see it with my own eyes, but I, I caught it on video. And when I first watched it, I thought, well, that's, that's, you know, that's Robert. He's, he's put that on my camera. He's done some effects editing, whatever, and, and put it on my camera. But it was after actually confronting Bob about it and showing him the videos and his reaction to it that I was like, well, if he didn't fake it and nobody else obviously would know how to fake that in my family, they're not, they're not as, um, into like videos me and Bob were it's I, I just couldn't I couldn't think of a reasonable explanation which is obviously what spurred further investigation into it so I think for, for me actual witnessing it wise I think that would probably be it but there have been circumstances in the past like incidents that have happened that I just kind of brushed off at the time but it's looking back at them that you think actually whatever explanation I'd told myself at the time doesn't really make that much sense. I've obviously just told myself that to, to brush the subject off and be done with it. And there was an instance when, uh, when I was very young and I'm not, this is not to say I think I've been haunted my entire life. It's just, it was a weird occurrence that actually doesn't make much sense now that I look at it. Um, we had a converted attic in one of our houses and me and Robert used to sleep up there and because it was an attic it was still a storage space as well so there was like a guitar tucked away at the side and on a night I could have sworn I heard those guitar strings plucking now I'm a little kid I'm in an attic it's pitch black it makes sense that I would be scared so I just kind of brushed it off I told my dad about it he said we had some metal sheeting outside maybe it was raining and it echoes up into the loft something to that effect and I just kind of accepted that because, you know, I don't want to be scared. I want to believe that. But looking back on it, I don't think the metal sheets would quite make the sound that I was hearing, if you know what I mean. So I don't know if that's actually really to do with your question. I just thought it was an interesting story, but it kind of ties in with something that I couldn't explain. So I don't know. There's that. Igor asks, what do you feel in your body when a ghost or a demon is near you? And do they enter in your dreams? Okay, so I think it varies um, from spirit to spirit. I don't think it's it's the exact same feeling. There are common feelings that you get, like you hear all ghost investigators uh, explain, like the sort of static electricity sort of feeling, like that prickliness on your skin. Um, and I believe that's just to do with the makeup of spirits. I think that's the energy. It's it's the same thing that causes the EMF to go off. It's it's just reacting physically with your body. But as well as that, you've kind of got an emotional transference that kind of happens i think when you're in the presence of a spirit that is that is carrying strong emotions i think you do pick those up and i think um with my own experiences i'll use my own as an example is um with the likes of anna i get a very melancholic kind of feeling about it like just a sort of sad and loneliness sort of comes over you sometimes um it has in, in a couple of investigations, I've kind of been washed over with that feeling. And then going further back to when the negative entity was around, it would be more like anger and just, I don't know, like short tempered, like the stuff that's just out of my nature in general. 
you can sometimes pick that up as well. So I do I do think it varies from ghost to ghost, but there are common grounds as well. As for dreams, I do believe that spirits can visit you in the dreams. Like I've heard stories of when a person's passed and somebody dreams about them that night, like that night, even though they didn't know that they'd passed. And I, I do think that's a spirit trying to communicate with you. I can't say for sure that that's happened to me because I'm just really bad at remembering my dreams. I've never been able to do it. I have tried keeping a dream journal, but as I say, I just don't remember them enough to actually pick out the details that would probably matter. So all I can say is I'm going to try and focus on that maybe a little bit in going forward and try to remember them, keep keep track of dreams, and hopefully I'll have some interesting ones to tell you guys in the future. Julie Kalos asks, Are you going to keep communicating with these spirits or eventually try to rid your home of them? How does your fiancé feel about this? Main goal isn't really to get rid of them from my house because I've kind of got to a point where I'm, I'm used to the idea that there are spirits around. It's more to do with the individual spirits that are trying to communicate. So I do believe that they're communicating for a reason. They have things that they want to say and things that they want people to know. And so if I help them and that in turn helps them move on, then that's kind of like that's that's a bonus really that the house is 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 a little bit clear from that. But it's not really my main goal. As for how Shauna feels about it, I know you guys really want to to see Shauna and hear her talking about it, but she just doesn't want to be in the videos. Now, it's not for lack of trying. I am trying to convince her to do it, but I'm not going to go pushing her into something she don't want to do. Um, she doesn't she doesn't mind me talking about it, uh, as I am now, but only to a certain extent. She still wants to be kept separate. So, suffice it to say, she's interested in paranormal, maybe not to the extent I am, where I'm constantly actively investigating. She's happy to hear about it. She will watch the ghost shows with me, but... It's it's a kind of it's a slightly milder interest in it. Um, as for the spirits in the home, there's there's something we've obviously had to work out ourselves. This is kind of baggage that I bring with me, and she's she's happy to go forward with that. She doesn't mind me investigating so long as I know when to stop. That is that is the most important thing, and the thing I've agreed on is that if it gets to a point that I feel I'm not comfortable with this, that's when I stop. I, I just have to cut it short and, and leave it be because safety is more important for, for the pair of us. Christella asks, are you going to get a better spirit box? Have you seen Steve Huff's channel, Huff Paranormal? So I assume that's because the SB7 is quite a noisy ghost box and I'm kind of in the mind of Steve Huff on this one that I don't believe that the white noise is necessary for spirit communication with a ghost box. With things like EVP, it is because there is only the white noise to manipulate to create a word. But with the likes of a spirit box, you've got so many different audio signals coming in that they can manipulate to create words. Sources already contain words that they can use. I don't think the noise is necessary at that point. There are better sources for them to use. And so it's not necessarily that the SB7 is bad. I think it can be better if it's just the noise is cut so I am working on a device kind of like Steve Huff's portal that will cut the white noise and, and just enhance the SB7 as it is but that said I am looking at getting uh, a few different ghost boxes just to try them out in the future. David J Holland asks and on a personal note are you two planning on getting married? We do intend to at some point we did get engaged with the full intentions of doing so but being fully grown up people we decided that we were going to sort our careers out you know get a house that sort of thing before we decided to take the plunge and get married so stay tuned for that one guys I'll, I'll no doubt tell you guys when we when we have done. Spooks asks would you ever go on an all night investigation with ghost adventures if they would let you at a place of their choice? Hell yes I would. I would absolutely love it I think that would be brilliant. Um, I think that's just, it's an opportunity of a lifetime, really. I don't think it would matter where they decided to go. I mean, it could be Bobby Mackey's, but the, the, the chance to go investigate with someone as well known as the Ghost Adventures are and as reputable as they are, I think that would be brilliant. Um, so, yeah, I, I probably would. It, 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 too good an opportunity to miss. Javi Herondale asks, What type of music do you like? As cliche as it sounds, I will pretty much listen to anything except modern pop music. I just do not care for it. I, maybe it's because I work in a warehouse and the radio's on all the time. I just come to hate every new song that comes out. Um, give me some Johnny Cash, Bob Dylan, like Frank Turner, any day of the week. Stuff that just aren't so popular, old school country, acoustic guitars, that kind of thing. But 
you can keep your pop music to yourself, I think. Sarah M asks, how does having a ghost affect your daily and personal life? It doesn't really affect it that much, to be honest. I mean, looking at the videos from your guys' point of view, it must look like my house is constantly active, like things are getting thrown around and stuff all the time, but it's just because I'm not posting videos in which there is nothing happening. So it's like, if you look at the date stamps, these things can happen weeks apart. It's not like it's happening every night. So as far as my day-to-day -day experience goes, it's not, it doesn't really have a great effect on it. Um, in the past, maybe I'd lose a bit of sleep about it and it, it'd keep me up. And so that, that would have repercussions. But as far as the day-to-day -day goes, I can quite easily just put it out of my mind that these things are, are happening and that there are spirits present and just and just get on with with my daily routine. Morgan asks, just wondering, are you religious at all? Now, I've been asked this a lot. Um, I don't really follow a particular religion. I would consider myself an agnostic. I believe that there's something, um, but I'm too indecisive to decide which one. Nothing has really swayed me in a particular direction as of yet. I do believe there are too many coincidences for there not to be some kind of higher power in, in play, but what that higher power is, I'm... I'm, I'm just, I have no idea. So as far as it goes, no particular religion as of yet, but I do have a belief system and what I believe is in existence, for example, spirits and stuff. And I just, I don't know how that quite ties into an overall religious belief just yet. So that's it for this week's Q&A video, guys. I hope I answered your questions sufficiently. If I didn't get to your question, like I said before, don't panic, I might get to it in a later video. If not, drop it in the comments and I will try to get to it as soon as I can. So thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I'll post any and all activity as and when I get it.